Welcome back to MGS TV. I'm your host Winnie Wu, and today we are here with Mr. Kazuaki Sasaki. Um, he's assistant professor at Nihon University. Welcome to our show, Sasaki. Thank you <laughs> um, so, this is the first ever Macau gaming show. What are your impressions so far? Very good, very good. So very, so very organized and very clean and uh, so very good hospitality. I think so. Sasaki-san, is this your first trip to Macau? If so, what are your impressions? And if not, what changes have stood out for you? I think so. In 2004, my first trip to Macau. So I am surprised. Uh, very changed, very changed. I think the Las Vegas trip uh, moved to Macau. <laughs> I am very surprised. There has been a lot of talk about casinos opening in Japan. What is the current status of this issue? I think the countdown will start. So I think the, at the end of this year, so casino IR, uh, uh, casino IR promotion law will submit to the Congress. And uh, the next ordinary Congress session, uh, it will be approved. I think so. The countdown will start. If casinos are legalized in Japan, how many casinos are there likely to be? And of what style? Are we looking at massive integrated resorts such as Venetian Macau, where we're sitting at right now, or will it be smaller, more intimate venues? I see. The, at first, uh, three to four IR uh, in Japan. And after that, uh, revise the regulations up to ten locations. Uh, at first, I said uh, three to four locations IR, and uh, plus uh, two IR uh, the metropolitan IR, just like the Singapore style. And uh, the rest of the two or one uh, one area is local IR. Uh, and there's a 4 billion investment scale, I think so. What regulatory framework do you think is most likely for Japanese casinos if they are legalized? Will it be something similar to what we see in Singapore or in Macau or elsewhere? Or could it be something uniquely Japanese? I see, I see. Uh, so probably so Japanese government uh, is benchmarking the Singapore control system. Uh, but you know the Japanese uh, machine maker uh, has a uh, high technology uh, to run the uh, machines. So plus of the technology uh, is uh, very unique in Japanese uh, IR. I think so. Uh, especially so the face recognition system uh, is very good for Japanese. Very strong point uh, for the Japanese companies. You are one of the few gaming researchers in Japan. Can you tell us a little bit about the areas your research has focused on and what your findings have been? I see. Uh, I am teaching the university's uh, management. So my main field of the research is uh, uh, management about gaming. But uh, you say uh, there are very few researchers about gaming in Japan, so including me, about uh, five person in Japan, <laughs> very, very few. Because Japanese has a very bad image about gaming. But Japanese like gaming, gaming gambling very much. <laughs> Obviously, Japan has a well-established pachinko market. Are the forces behind the nation's pachinko palace lobbying the government in an effort to help the development of casinos? Uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, because of the large pachinko pahara and large pachinko uh, makers uh, want to have the casino in Japan, I think so. So that uh, they do not oppose the casino regulation law in Japan. The Japanese people are very different from the people compared to the rest of the Asia. And is there a big gambling culture in Japan? Uh, with, uh, different culture, uh, same same culture. Uh, it is uh, but uh, very different and uh, very similar, uh, especially gaming. But so uh, about uh, probably Japanese uh, gamblers, uh, Japanese people like hybrid uh, style games. 
So you know the pachinko. Pachinko is a big market in Japan. So machine game. Uh, Japanese people like machine game. But uh, probably so the hybrid style. Hybrid style. So the uh, not machine, not table game. Hybrid style. Uh, plus, so like Japan, just like uh, Singapore style. I see. Well, welcome to MGS TV. Thank you much. And we'll see you next time on MGS TV.